everybody, thanks for coming out for an update. Uh, primarily, we're providing an update today for uh, the response to our uh, to the hurricane relief, tropical storm relief that's been going on now in our state for a couple of uh, for a couple of weeks. Uh, I have with me today uh, Speaker Sexton, Leader Johnson, uh, Director Sheehan from uh, TEMA. We're in the Emergency Operations Center here at TEMA. Uh, Commissioner Ely with the uh, Department of Transportation is here. Uh, Director Smith with uh, TenCare is here. And all these folks have been working together with our team, um, um, along with many others, but uh, lead here uh, for response efforts across the state. So when we open up for questions, you can ask me or anybody uh, that's here today. So as I said, we want to provide an update. We have been at this now for almost two weeks and there have been there's been significant work done uh, and particularly in the affected counties in Upper East Tennessee. I've been up there four times uh, along with all of these folks multiple times. We have hundreds of TDOT workers there. We have hundreds of National Guard there. We have a continued and ongoing response. Uh, but much of what we've done to date has been recovery and rescue and immediate response and now we're focused on sort of go, moving forward and healing and recovery in the future. Um, in my time on the ground, one of the things, one of the recurring themes that I had that I heard from leaders across the counties was that while they anticipate getting federal funding reimbursements for the work that's going to have to be done, uh, they have to do the work immediately. That response is immediate and the costs are spent immediately in these local counties to begin cleanup and to begin restoration and to provide recovery efforts. Uh, the bridge, the fiscal bridge between now and when the federal funds will uh, be reimbursed that fiscal bridge is really difficult for those counties to manage and because of what we learned in the last couple of weeks from those leaders today we're announcing the Helene Emergency Assistance Loan Program or what we're, we're calling the HEAL program. It is a hundred million dollar no, no interest loan, a hundred million dollar no interest loan available to the affected counties uh, to front those costs that they would otherwise be fronting. Um, particularly and specifically costs associated with uh, drinking water and water restoration and with wastewater systems that have been damaged and with uh, dangerous debris removal. The health and well-being of the community is the primary focus here and so we'll be using dollars actually from the uh, shared savings program in our Medicaid waiver with the federal government that is specifically targeted for health and well-being of, of the citizenry, those, a portion of those dollars will be uh, used to create this hundred million dollar no, no interest uh, loan. That Our goal is to directly impact health and well-being of Tennesseans. The counties that are eligible for the program are those that are in the disaster declaration. I'll reel them off. Carter, Claiborne, Cock, Granger, Green, Hamblin, Hawkins, Jefferson, Johnson, Sevier, Sullivan, Unicoi, and Washington. The structure of the program is $65 million uh, for dangerous debris that will be distributed to distressed and at-risk counties. $35 million of the $100 million will be used by all the counties for water and wastewater uh, structural recovery efforts. It's as I said before, the focus here is on the most immediate health impacts on the population and obviously drinking water, uh, wastewater, and, and dangerous debris is immediately affecting their health. So we've worked together uh, with multiple agencies to create this and with the, with the cooperation and coordination and help of the General Assembly. Uh, our state is in a strong position to be able to do this. We have as you know, we have, have worked really hard to create um, 
a, a fiscal policy that allows us to tap resources when we need them for just for purposes like this. So we're, we're pleased that we're able to roll out the HEAL program today. There are a number of other things that I'll give updates on uh, before taking questions. Uh, Patrick Sheehan is here with our director of TEMA. TEMA has, has put in place a multi-agency resource center in two different locations in the region. Uh, we want to make sure that folks who need uh, food assistance or Department of Human Services assistance, any programs that they get from the state, driver's license renewals, that they can come to one place at kind of a one-stop shop for uh, government services that they receive through the state. So we've opened these multi-agency centers and if they come to these centers they can either find the help there or they can be directed to the appropriate health help in the region. We've also, TEMA has also opened up an East Tennessee Disaster Response Center in cooperation with the Bristol Motor Speedway. This is a, I've been there and visited, it's a very well organized uh, sort of one-stop shop for all things volunteer, donation, nonprofits. It's a coordinated effort to make sure that the tons and truckloads of supplies that are coming into our state for victims are coordinated and distributed where they're needed through the, from TEMA to the local uh, emergency management agencies in each one of these affected counties. I gotta tell you that, that was an impressive thing to see. You know, we have professional response through, uh, through TEMA, through law enforcement, through National Guard, through Highway Patrol, but the people and the, the volunteer spirit in the state of Tennessee is alive and well, and it shows up in this emergency response center. There are also volunteers from across the country. So I walked down the line of people that were in line with their trucks and cars to deliver goods to the emergency response center. Folks from New York, folks from West Virginia, folks from Kentucky, who drove trucks down here with supplies to be uh, offloaded and distributed to Tennessee. And so the Disaster Response Center is, is up and running with a, with a call center for victims, uh, for survivors. TDOT, as I said, is working. We have 700 TDOT folks in the region uh, working to restore bridges. I-26, a portion of I-26 opened back up today down to the <coughs> I-26 bridge in Irwin. I-40, uh, the portion of I-40 that is in Tennessee that goes to the North Carolina line is currently being reworked. It will open, one lane of the I-40 will reopen within about a week to provide two-way traffic so that commerce can continue to move uh, throughout Tennessee. We have multiple bridges that are on a fast track a plan that already contracted and work has already begun. The, the major state uh, highway bridges that need to be replaced are underway. So there's a tremendous amount of work being done on, on the TDOT side uh, to, get, uh, to get roads up so folks can get where they need to be. Uh, we have announced tax relief programs for those in affected areas. So sales tax relief, tax filings uh, put out, F &E, franchise and excise tax filings postponed until next year uh, to provide financial relief for those who are affected. Uh, there's a, there are a lot of things being done. These are some of the updates that we have and we'll continue to provide updates. We'll also continue to look for ways that we can provide additional assistance going forward. So HEAL, uh, it was important that we announce this. We've already begun the process of determining the pathway for funds to get out into those counties. What we know is that federal funding comes slow. It comes back slow. It is a reimbursement process, which means, which means that the counties have to spend the money first before they get it back. And that was the untenable part for the counties. That is why we came together in this last week and said, how can we solve that, help solve that for them? And that's what this HEAL grant program is. It is the interim strategy for them to cross that fiscal bridge and get to the place where, when, where the federal funding will begin to come in and the work that they have put out to restore their communities uh, is, uh, is paid for through those federal funds. It, it's, a, it's one step in what we believe is that 
path for hope and healing forward uh, for East Tennessee. And we think it is only a step. We'll continue to do that. This recovery will be years in the making. Uh, but we have to start, and we have to start aggressively, and uh, and we've done so, and we'll continue to do so. So thank you for uh, thank you for giving me a few minutes to give an update. Happy to take questions. We'll start over here. Are the families for the um, workers affected uh, of the die of the plastic um, with the plastic company? Are they receiving any help from the government or from the company? Well, first of all. It's a tragic situation. We all acknowledge that it's, a, it's a, one of the most heartbreaking, you know, fact patterns around the around this incident is that people have lost their lives in this, and that there are there are still missing. There are some still missing, not necessarily from that plant, but across the state. And there are efforts, search and rescue efforts, continue to this day. The TBI is involved in that process as well, and is investigating that particular circumstance that you have, but. Those families have the same access to services, and, I, and I'll say the services in that community in Irwin are robust. Uh, there, there's been a tremendous amount of volunteer efforts there, food, water, clothing, shelter. Um, but there are also professional services available to those families to find their relatives if they're lost, not just in that plant, but all across the state. and. Uh, and, and then, as I said, TBI is investing in the particulars about that case. Yes, sir. How about we go this way, if you got questions? Governor Lee, yep. um, so how, how, with all the infrastructure needs that are out there, how does the state pay for it? Do we need to dip into the budget rainy day fund to be able to expedite some of these big infrastructure yeah. needs? The, the good news is that we passed a Transportation Modernization Act two years ago that put billions of dollars into our uh, highway funds. So we have dollars available to, to do these projects. We have to prioritize those dollars and those projects, but we have the money available to do them. And we've picked the projects that are most important to get finished earliest, and those are the ones we're working on. Does that mean some projects already in the pipeline that may have gotten pr prior approval may be set back now for well, East Tennessee? Well, actually, what, what happens for most of these projects is these there will be reimbursement dollars available from the federal government to pay for many of these projects. That's what disaster declarations do for you, uh, is they set you up to receive reimbursement dollars. Many of these projects will... Uh, will qualify for those reimbursement dollars and the state will and the state will uh, have the same situation the counties do right now where we temporarily put out money which we will through TDOT and then reimburse for them. Bush you have anything to add to that? No, that, that's, you said, that, that's you, you it. Said, you said it well. We have the dollars we should be reimbursed for the, for a large portion of this work and then we have we obviously have have money to to fill that gap. How did you come to the decision to use the tent care money as opposed to say rainy day fund or maybe some sort of disaster relief fund if the state and if the state doesn't have a disaster relief fund, should it consider setting one up? Well the dollars from the shared savings are particularly and specifically designed for the health and welfare of Tennesseans. The dollars for this year's savings have not been the the, the current savings that we anticipate or that we actually have received for the current year have not been allocated uh, that would that would be coming in the upcoming budget but these dollars are ours they're here they're available and they're specifically designed to be used for health and welfare this is a clearly a health and welfare welfare issue clean water uh, wastewater sewage treatment so it was exactly the right dollars to use. Governor, um, if you're kind of we're spending future dollars haven't been allocated in that pot of money, um, how are y'all balancing? Will there be some programs that might have to be dialed back next year as we wait for federal money to come in to get those reimbursements and pay the loans back? How are you balancing different priorities there? That's a really good question. One of the things we've asked ourselves is what we know, we haven't determined what those shared savings dollars would be used for. TenCare has made proposals to us. It's kind of the budget process that we have going forward. Um, 
you know, we'll look at those proposals and say, should we fund them another way? We do have resources because of our surplus, because of the, uh, because of the economy of our state, which is robust, and because of, uh, you know, anticipated revenues that outperform expectations. So we, we have dollars to choose, you know, we have dollars to decide where they're going to be spent, and we'll, we'll determine if some of the programs that might have been uh, funded through this shared savings, we, we, we may or may not fund them going forward. We also don't know exactly, I mean, these dollars will come back to us, and because they're zero interest loans, but they will be repaid when the federal funding comes. The timing of that's unsure, so that, that'll be part of the calculus of those programs when and if they get funded. And providing those grants, will each county get like a block grant or counties applying for specific, this is our specific need, we need X amount of money, how will it work? In, yeah, in I, can, I can't tell, I can't speak to the particulars. f and is actually working out that grant program right now. Um, we do know the general block of dollars, 35 million for the water and sewer, because there's a pretty, there's already been some pretty good um, estimates from the counties themselves that this should cover the bulk of their needs for water and sewer. It could change, uh, but that, that's how we structured the 3565. That particulars about how those grants will be, uh, I, I can't speak to those, but FNA is developing that plan right now because we need to get the dollars out. Now that we've announced it, we've, we've made the county mayors aware so they can begin to give us information about how it's needed, how quickly it's needed, what they need most, and it'll allow us to structure those grants. Governor, given the long-term uh, needs for public infrastructure, not just in Northeast Tennessee, but across our state, how could that affect your desire to launch new initiatives next year? Um, for instance, the, the Universal Voucher Program, and would you be even willing to reallocate the $144 million that's sitting there not being used for more immediate needs or for some of these public infrastructure needs? Yeah, I think uh, public infrastructure is obviously a, a very crucial investment for our state, and we've shown that in the Transportation Modernization Act, a billion dollar, and 900 million for infrastructure for uh, for technology, 1.3 billion for water and sewer. Those those investments, along with a billion dollars for TISA funding, public education, uh, proposed funding for an education uh, freedom scholarship. Those are all possible. Uh, because of the way we've managed the budget over the last 20 years in this state. We have resources, we have an economy, we have the ability to invest in the things, infrastructure and, edu and education both. We don't have to choose one or the other. Uh, and this is a perfect example of, of our approach to uh, these shared savings. And th this is the only waiver in the country like this for 10 care, for Medicaid. And it, it was a, a waiver that was developed under the Trump administration and approved under the Biden administration. And it, is, it has allowed us to have these dollars to spend last year, for example, on the, on the diaper program for, for, uh, for 10 care moms. This year, 100 million of that's gonna be spent on water and sewer for affected citizens in the communities. We have the resources that we need if we're wise going forward in how we spend them, we can make the right kind of investments, and infrastructure will absolutely be one of them we'll continue to invest in significantly. Governor, what do you think the biggest need is right now? Oh, that's a hard question to ask. I think the biggest need is uh, <clears throat> coordination and co cooperation. We have so many resources and by that, I mean National Guard, TEMA, local law enforcement, local elected officials, the General Assembly, uh, nonprofits, volunteers, dollars coming in from other states, FEMA. We, we have multiple uh, pathways to relief. The coordination and the execution of those is what's needed most. The encouraging thing for me is it's happening in our state. 
Highways are being built. Bridges are being restored. People are, are getting food and water delivered to them when roads are out. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of difficulty. There's been a lot of heartache across our state and, and frankly across the country and even continuing again in Florida. But what's needed most is efficient response that gets what people need delivered to them when they need it. And, and that's really the, the heart behind this HEAL program is. I mean, I, this literally came from me walking down a you know, ravaged street and a county mayor saying to me, you know, we need to start spending money to clean this up, but we may not be able to make payroll if we have to spend the money on cleanup. It's a very poor county. So we came back and said, how do we solve that problem? And the way we do it, and we creatively called the cabinet together and said, we have to think out of the box. Stephen Smith said, we have these dollars in uh, the shared savings program. They can be used for health and welfare. And Incl that includes water and sewer. And we, we tried to determine the extent of the immediate need. And we felt like $100 million might be enough to get to bridge that fiscal a gap for them and and that's what we did here so it's it's the kind of cooperation collaboration uh, efficient and immediate response that people out there that are hurting need these people have lost everything many of them they've lost their family members they're still looking for their family members they, they there is a there is a lot of need there what needs to happen is it needs to be delivered quick. Has the federal government done enough? I mean, we've worked with our partners in the federal government from day one. And uh, I will just say that our our goal there is to be a good, is to be a good partner. And um, Patrick can speak to particulars about FEMA, but we've been focused on FEMA, Department of Transportation, local law enforcement, pulling people together, and, and getting rescue to these folks. This has been for us a survivor-centric response. We've tried to stay focused on the survivors out there, and that's what they are, survivors of uh, whatever they have survived, financial ruin, you know, fear for their own life, survived a, you know, a flood, survived from a roof, survived a helicopter recovery, but it's survivor-centric. And that's that's our that's been a, the focus of our efforts. Governor, it's been, it's been, let uh, me do. What, has anybody not asked a question? I'm over here. Okay. Um, Governor, is there anything differently that you feel like y'all could have done from the state level two weeks from the storm? I mean, I've been really pleased with the response. We, um, you know, no, nothing's perfect, but. I've been really pleased, pleased with the response. We have, I've gotten really strong feedback from local officials about the, the speed of the response, um, the collaboration, the volunteerism that's out there. You know, we had some, uh, we had some very tragic and heartbreaking loss of life across the state, but you know, we rescued 62 people from the roof of a hospital in, a, in, a, in what seemed to be an unlikely rescue situation. And that was, the, that was the effort of a lot of folks that came together in just a very short period of time and minutes, frankly, to make sure those folks were saved. And there are a lot of stories like that, along with the heartbreaking ones, but I'm very encouraged, very grateful to the hundreds of National Guardsmen that are still out there today ferrying water and food to remote communities the highway patrol, the TDOT workers that have worked day and night. It's, it's been a, a, you know, and, and frankly, the Herculean effort that people spent to actually find the missing in the days right after the flood. Uh, nothing's perfect, and certainly we wish that no life had been lost, and, but I've been real pleased with the recovery efforts. We have time for one more question. Right. We'll take one more. Yes, sir. Yeah, Governor, uh, it's kind of a two-part question, but first of all, has President Biden reached back out to you to further aid or any other support um, to you and everything? I know you had mentioned that he did co contact you when it first happened, and we know North Carolina is receiving a lot more coverage because significantly a little bit more damage there, but in Tennessee in particular, has he reached back out, and do you feel that FEMA and the federal government has been really helping Tennesseans as much as they've been helping North Carolina? 
uh, the president called me. Um, I, don't, I don't know what day he called me, but particularly I could I could back it up and see. But he called me and at the at some point in this response and and said, you know, it was after they had awarded the declaration. Um, and we had a nice conversation. And as, as it relates to FEMA, I'll just say, you know, I've been through multiple of these disasters and disaster declarations and working with FEMA. And my focus is on being, a part, being the best partner we can with them. Can we do better? We need your help. We need to work together. And, and that's been our focus. So, um, Again, I think what's most important is that collaboration, and and we've re really worked really hard to collaborate with FEMA to make sure that our people get what they need here. So you mentioned the thirty-two million from USDOT. Department and of Transportation as well has provided Quick Start, uh, quick start funds, thirty-two million dollars. Uh, well, they have granted it. The money's not here, obviously, but it's like federal funding; it'll come. But that's part of the part of the answer about how we pay for some of the work that we're doing right now we there's there's funding associated with from department of transportation and from fema for these for these repairs all right thank you all some for other being states here. initiated the, the process in advance of the storm i believe could you have done the same thing? yeah so uh, coastal states can uh prim preliminarily request a uh, disaster declaration. We have to. We wait until the disaster actually has occurred in our state before we request it. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.